Marlene from, and I'm with Sioux River Bees and my partner Jim. We work together. We keep our base near Milford, Iowa, and we work from there out about, oh, mm, what? 60 miles. Yeah, 60 mile radius that we have all our bees. And we do the honey processing in Ocheden. So what, what we're gonna do here, the bees just came back from California on Sunday. So now we wanna check to make sure that they're, they are queenless or queen right and or if sure. they need to be split right away or whatever. When we see a hive with population like this, it kind of throws a thought in your mind that you probably better split it and get some queens so you can do your splits. So, and this is this is a real good picture of a of a good healthy hive here, full of bees. So we take them take a look. You want to work on the outside of the box, so typically the queen would be towards the middle. You don't want to hurt her as you're taking frames out. That looks like, is that almond nectar or Yeah, it'd be probably, probably almond nectar, yep. Yeah. It doesn't taste very good. Did you <laughs> almond honey doesn't yeah. taste good? <laughs> I don't think. So this one, this one is definitely queen right. We have brood, we have larva, so she's been laying. There's a big old drone running around in there where you typically wouldn't see them drones or very many of them here in Iowa yet, but because they came from California, they made some drones. Yep. And we are working hard to call old comb so that they have nice good comb to work on and this is this shows you because um, there's no drone stuff really in here drone cells you can see a lot of a lot of brood under there looks nice So being there's uh, this much brood in the top box, she probably has let me smoke them a little bit. several frames already in the bottom box. So we we are going to need to split this one or get two. If we don't split them, then pretty soon half of them are going to leave and we go leave, to the trees. Yep, go to the trees. We'll lose out unless we can catch them. That's just a natural part of bees is that they swarm and produce another another colony by splitting off. I haven't seen her yet. So we, yeah, we we try to date them, but that gets busy in the summer too. But even though this one was built in 2020, it still looks really good. We go by the color of the cells. Once it gets really dark, then we want to get rid of the wet, get rid of the foundation. And I can see that that's some of your foundation <laughs> down there. Probably some of the first that we got. Since ours came back from California, they do have quite a bit of feed yet, but if some of them need to be fed, we, we use this frame feeder here, and we'll just use sugar water, mix it one to one in the spring. Give them something to work on until the first dandelions and maple trees start.
So they have honey left. We left this honey from last last year, but you can see that they're they're eating it. Here's a darker one, I bet. Let's see. Yeah, we should get some more smoke here a minute. Okay. Mm, that's full, that's full of honey full yet. Honey. Some fresh nectar in there. So these frame. aren't, this is a, yeah, it's an older frame, right? We'll probably, and this, see, as the, as the cells are dark, this will be a frame that we get rid of once they get this all cleaned out and we rearrange frames. We will get rid of this one and give them new foundation because they, they do a good job on that building. They like to build. They'd rather use new and get, build new than to use that. The dark stuff, because our chemicals are in that wax. The chemicals from our environment are harbored in that wax, which isn't good for the eggs that get laid in there. So I think that is another one of our problem things, don't you? Yeah. They start getting too too drony or something. We don't want big patches of drones in there. You're naturally going to have some small patches of drone, but but uh, if they get bigger than a size of my fist in there, that many drones in there, we start thinking about getting them out of there. Yeah, it's not a, a rush for us to need to feed these. No, they're they're heavy. But we will get started treating for mites too shortly. Yeah, we got to get started. And... So this queen, I don't know. She's probably getting older just because we've got quite a few spaces in here. It's We like the pattern to be all solid like this here. The laying pattern. Well, there's, there's a couple things that cause that. Um, age is one. They finally just start running out of the ability to continue to lay eggs. And uh, some of them might only last a year. They might not have gotten mated real good when they emerged and took their mating flight. So they ran out of gas quicker than um, you like to see them. But uh, um, yeah, this one definitely will probably look at requeening. She got a patch pretty good. She's got a pretty good here pretty though. Pretty good here though. Yep. Yep. So we just have to take and maybe it was something in that in that comb yep. that, that wasn't good because there's nice this is all pearly white larva. under here yeah so we just need to look at the whole picture when we're deciding what what really is going on yeah just because one frame looks bad doesn't mean that she's doing a bad job you got to check more than one we will be let's see we got to move these over we will be giving them some pollen substitute until the maple trees start. The, the maple trees are really the first source of pollen around here. Maple, elm, box elder, those are all good sources of pollen. But until then, uh, we give them some extra protein, which will keep that queen really laying. But on, but the flip side of that is that they're going to be building faster and we'll have to really manage whether they're uh, swarming. So as, where's our, where did we put that patty here? Mm -hmm. That brood patty here. Oh, yeah. So 
this is a, a protein patty and you can just lay that right right in here and then they're gonna they'll tear that wax paper off of there and you'll see pieces laying out front <laughs> and then they'll eat the that extra protein and keep her laying there's one over here you can see how they filled that with almond honey well this one here I marked re-queen on because when my first impression when I looked, I didn't think it looked as populated as like we would like. And it isn't down there either. So we will take a look at this and if there's not much brood in here, it tells us that she is failing. See, there isn't right in the center like that, there ought to be brood there. And a matter of fact, a lot of times when we see pollen packed cells like that in there and no brood, it's kind of an indicator that it could even be, she's either completely shut down or it's queenless, one or the other. Because they're not using the, they're not using the pollen as it's coming in to feed larvae, so, um, they just pack it in. So this one here does need attention with a queen. Like I wrote that on there. So for people that are just starting, if they don't have anything, then we get packages and nukes that we supply people with and we handle Premier Foundation to start everybody out with. So we keep new boxes and the whole hive set up and then we also can send do do little demonstrations as they come to pick up their bees we can show them if they haven't taken a class show them how to install a package or a nuke or we do give give classes uh, we're actually having one uh, northwest iowa beekeepers is having a class coming up here so they la ours is last in one day this year and then we're going to do some zoom follow-up Zoom class and we have awesome meetings once a month where we have lots of education, hands-on, in the bee yard kind of education. Show you how to do a mite check, show you how to treat for mites. Just, and um, to watch for quality of the queen and yep. just the general health of the hive. Teach them what they need to know about uh, keeping a healthy hive.